In this video, you and me were taking a deep dive into my personal fountain pen collection in order to review a fountain pen which served as inspiration for one of the most successful exclusive editions of Penvenger. As always, I'm your host Aaron from Penvenger. Welcome back to another fountain pen review. Yeah, it's been some time since we didn't have a review for one of my personal fountain pens. And the one that we are going to experience today, it's a very special one because it captivated me. It was so intoxicating when I first seen it and I knew back then that a person that loves demonstrator fountain pens as much as this guy right here is gonna do a demonstrator pen based on this design. But anyway, we're not here to talk about my exclusive edition, which was inspired by this specific fountain pen. We are here to review the Delta Dolce Vita Oversize demonstrator fountain pen. As usual with my reviews at Penventure, we're gonna go with some information regarding the pen company, the fountain pen model, uh, then we're going to go through all of the details of this fountain pen, side-by-side -side size comparison, writing sample, and in the end, we're gonna conclude everything in some personal opinions of myself, of course. If you go right now, you wouldn't find one of these fountain pens available, or at least wherever you find it available, it is at a very steep pricing and they are notorious for being problematic and probably one of the best things regarding this fountain pen is that we still have examples in good condition like the one that we have right here that we can explore together on the Venture YouTube channel. I said this for quite a lot of times. I'm a huge fan of Delta fountain pens and Delta as a company. I know that recently they relaunch the brand and everything but what i specifically collect are vintage delta fountain pens and i'm proud to be friends with the co-founder of the delta pen company chiro matrone my good friend and some of the fountain pens from my personal collection that are delta fountain pens are from him or at least I went to the process of researching all of the information with him and then purchasing them for my personal fun pen collection. Like I said many times before, Delta was so ahead of their times with the materials, with the designs, with everything. And the Dolce Vita is probably one of the most iconic fountain pens of Delta. And they started in 1998 with a great combination of black, orange body and the end knob is black. But one of my favorite models from the Dolce Vita series, of course, it's the demonstrator fountain pen that we have right here as a subject for our review. Let's zoom in and let's dive into the details of this fountain pen model. The Dolce Vita series is characterized by a fountain pen which is flat at ends, quite chunky, beautiful, very aesthetic, very minimalistic, and it does have some very good attributes to its design, its features, and everything tied up in this model. We're gonna start with the finial, which is flat, a little bit of dome shape, quite well polished, and right here on the finial we have the Delta logo. The dome shape finial, it's very nicely integrated with the rest of the cap, and right here we have some threads which are visible, and they tie this finial towards the body of the cap. Then we have the streamlined design vintage clip of Delta. This is used in a variety of fountain pen models from Delta and it's very aesthetic, it is minimalistic, it has this small wheel. Turning the fountain pen like this we can observe some of the first features that tells us that this is a vintage fountain pen because in modern days I haven't seen this too often and it's a small hole right here into the cap material. You can pretty much see that the nib has contact with the outside and this is something that I've seen only on vintage fountain pens. Turning the fountain pen like this on the end right here opposite to the clip we have on the finial Delta Italy engraved in this beautiful font. The thing that I love mostly about Delta fountain pens and not only that demonstrator Delta fountain pens is the actual way that you can see inside the fountain pen and you get captivated by how much details there are in the design of a fountain pen. The history tells us that demonstrator fountain pens were a tool that was used by a salesman to pitch the idea of a design for a fountain pen 
with the store owner or the store person that wanted to order this writing instruments and most of the times some of the sellers told the the representative from the factories can we have those fountain pens on the counter and then clients uh, that were looking for that getting fountain pens whenever they walk into the shop and say is that for sale i want one of that and this is how the legend of demonstration fountain pens came up to be what we call today fountain pens that are made from clear material and you can pretty much clearly see inside everything that's going on two rings one smaller and one cap ring which is a little bit more girthier i believe those are made in sterling silver nine to five on them we have a very nice pentagram design which is very 3d and if you run your fingers on it you can notice the the, the small ridges and every single detail and right here of course we have hallmark for sterling silver nine to five and right here on the lip we have over size et and uh, there are multiple sizes for this fountain pens this is the biggest size the oversized version and in my opinion is the one that i particularly like to collect looking down from the clip we have dolce vita the the sweet life how the italians call it the dolce vita i'm gonna untwist the cap because this is a screw cap and we have one complete turn of the cap so this is a practical model that you can take with you to take some notes i'm gonna point out some details in my personal opinions because right here on the uh, lip we have something to talk about but anyway we're gonna leave that information for the details at the end of the video and we are gonna take a quick look and by quick I mean we're gonna stare and drool at this gorgeous gorgeous size 8 gold neck which is incredible to look at we have a little heart shaped breather hole the contour of the nib is surrounded by this beautiful scroll art all around and right here in the middle we have the Delta logo under it, Delta stamped 14 karat gold. And on the right shoulder, right here at the base, we have the nib size fine. I, I love that you can put the size on the, on the shoulder of the nib because usually it's there, you look at it in front. But I love that some, if not most of the vintage fountain pens have the nib size on the left or the right shoulder. And since we are at the nib, let's check out this incredible, beautiful streamlined ebonite feeder. I just love how this ebonite feeders copy the nib and they don't stick out too much and it's so gorgeous and it's 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 a gusher and you will check out this fine point in a few moments in the writing sample is just simply sweet sweet melody and let's continue with the ergonomics for the delta dolce vita you have to understand that this is an oversized fountain pen so the overall look and feel of the fountain pen is defined by one single word chunky so the section is very very chunky and it's supposed to be like this i don't know but it's it's playing in very well with the overall look of the fountain pen with the overall shape of the fountain pen in my opinion if you would find a very very streamlined very thin section it wouldn't work as great as this one but this is a little bit more chunky gripping it like so my fingers don't touch all three of them are just simply not touching so this is a chunky section something that gives you plenty of control towards this nib and also for some people with smaller hands it may be too much or a little bit too much the overall shape of the section it's flaring out towards the nib this is supposed to prevent your fingers from slipping towards the nib although i haven't been in situation on the fountain pen that i really needed that there but it's sort of like a trend. You actually expect the section to be a little bit more flared out and this gives you confidence to grip the fountain pen and to use it. The strats right here at the base, those are polished quite well. And uh, also the Dolce Vita demonstrator is a play on textures because clear material on the cap, on the finial, it's alternated with frosted, unpolished material in some places like the section right here. And it gives out a little bit more depth. Let's Let's continue with the barrel of the fountain pen which uh, increase in girth towards this ring right here inside we can clearly see a sack this may not be something familiar to you because it's from the vintage era the sack filling system it's something which screams parker 51 this is something that you don't see every day let's move further and right here we have some threads this ring right here which is silver colored and i believe it's rhodium plated and we have this 
blind cap which actually gives out access when you unscrew it to a button. Yes, this is a variation of the SAC filling system. It's called button filler and it works like a charm. You press, you compress the SAC, then when you let it go, the sack resumes its initial form and it actually draws ink inside the sack. But you will see in a few moments how it's working. You can imagine that with all this moving parts, with rubber and uh, everything, you can expect that some things would go wrong. Yeah, you're right. Most of the examples of this fountain pens are not available anymore. Uh, they are in a poor condition, stained, or they have the rubber sack malfunctioning because the rubber it's a material which doesn't work too well with modern inks and by modern i mean boutique inks that have all sorts of things in them and for this fountain pen we're going to use something super safe as an ink in a few moments it has its advantages visually but it has some drawbacks and we're going to discuss them in a few moments in my personal opinions regarding this fountain pen overall this is the look of the fountain pen and now i would like to show you my creation my modern interpretation of this design with Leonardo of China Italiana, which actually inherited more than 40 years of experience from Delta in the form of craftsmanship that was passed from father to son from Ciro Matroni to Salvatore Matroni. Just like I told you, this fountain pen serves as inspiration towards my Leonardo Officina Italiana Nuda. They do share a lot of things in common. In modern times with better technology, we had some pretty impressive results. We did something which looks good, feels good, interesting, clear. You can see the nib inside the filling system. It's upgraded to a piston, which is made from aluminum, much more sturdy. The ink volume, it's increased a lot since it's a piston. There is a very small quantity still available at Pen Venture, less than 15 or even less, I don't know, like 10 fountain pens still left from the Nuda collection. And that's it, it's no longer available. This is what I have for you in regards of details for the Delta Dolce Vita Oversized Demonstrator button filler. Let's put it side by side other fountain pens to better understand its uh, length, its girth, its dimensions, proportions. As the name implies, this is a Dolce Vita Oversized, but I'm gonna show you why do I think there are more oversized fountain pens. Here you have a look next to a Delta Roma Imperiale, which clearly it's more oversized. This is how it looks next to a Danny Trio Genkai Momento Zero Grandis. As you can clearly see, the trend has been going up. Oversized back then, oversized right now. Uncapped the situation, it's a little bit different, yet the oversized Dolce Vita is shorter than a Leonardo Momento Zero Grande. The Roma Imperiale tops it for, I believe, like seven or eight millimeters, and then the Genkai, it's clearly topping off the Delta Roma Imperiale as well. Kept like this, the Delta Dolce Vita oversized measures 140 millimeters. Uncapped like this in writing position, it's gonna measure 130 millimeters. Posted like this, it's gonna measure 177 millimeters. Capped or posted in writing, the fountain pen will weigh 35 grams and uncapped like this in writing position, 22 grams. In regards of size, this is how things are. It's an oversized fountain pen, yet we need to be very specific what oversize meant in 98 and what oversize it's today, because we can clearly see fountain pens which exceeds like three centimeters longer than this one being called oversized. I mean, take a look next to a Namiki Emperor. Let's address the pricing matter. When this fountain pen was launched, I did some research. It retailed around 600, 700 euros, dollars around there. Today, realistically talking, if you would find one of these fountain pens in a good condition with everything on it, box, everything, uh, you would need to pay in excess of 1,000 euros, uh, 1,200 euros. You actually pay like double for this fountain pen because it's not longer available. Delta is not making any vintage fountain pens anymore. And also you will understand once I give you my perspective and opinion regarding this fountain pen in a few moments, why some of these models can fetch up double in regards of 
the value when it was launched. Now let's begin with the fun part. Let's ink it up with some great ink and let's let it loose on some good quality paper because this nib is ah, mamma mia. We're gonna use Inspired Blue, something which I truly believe it's a stunning turquoise ink. We're gonna press on and we're gonna compress this sack like this. We're gonna put the fountain pen in the ink and then let it draw the ink. You can see how the ink gets up into the sack more and more. And uh, there is some ink that got into the section. We're gonna go and just clean that in a few moments after we finish with the writing sample. The pen. There's the Dolce Vita oversize by Delta. The nib is 14 karat gold size 8 and this is a fine point. The ink Waterman inspired blue paper we are on 52 Tomo River paper, 52 GSM or grams per square meter. Now let's check the wetness and we're gonna go with one pass. Pretty wet, pretty, pretty wet. And this is a double pass. I would put the wetness to be like a 7.5 out of 10. A super wet fountain pen, yet still you can use it and for a fine point, this is something pretty enjoyable. Normal, figure of eights. And I wouldn't say this is a Japanese fine point. I mean, in this configuration, how wet it is, I would put it at being a skinny medium. Flex the nib a little bit. This is very rigid, very rigid. Pretty much we cannot squeeze an ounce of line variation. We only have some ink pooling from our motion to pull down the nib and to spread the tines a little bit, but I don't see pretty much anything as line variation. So for this one, we can say it's like a nail. Let's check out the famous sentence. Let's see how this fountain pen is writing. And we have the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. We have a nib which is smooth, but not the smoothest nib that I've tried. In regards of smoothness, this nib would be like maybe a solid 7.8 out of 10, 10 being the smoothest nib that I tried. But anyway, it doesn't come close to what Leonardo of Arena has in modern days as a size 8 gold nib. In regards of feedback, we have a little bit more feedback that I would like, uh, meaning that one is the most scratchy nib that I've tried, 10 it's glassy, smooth, nothing as feedback. I would put this one as being a five, although I would enjoy anything above six. So it's around there. I don't have nothing as hard starts, skippings, nothing whatsoever. The fountain pen writes from any angle, any perspective. It's a great writer. It's comfortable in writing. I haven't used it posted because it's ridiculously big and long and back weighted. So for me, it's one of those fountain pens that I use unposted. Now let's go and analyze everything and conclude in some personal opinions regarding this fountain pen. It is not a coincidence that I let this fountain pen as it is raw to demonstrate how it works, how it writes. Although I have expected it to draw some ink right here in the section and maybe maybe stain it in the process because the last time that I did wrote with this fountain pen it clearly had uh, the same thing happening but I wanted to demonstrate this fountain pen as it is raw what you can expect if you want to own such a pen and I wanted to show a contrast of technology and progress from this era to what we have here modern 
this fountain pen and clearly we can see that we have a lot of progress did and everything is reflected from uh, the demonstrator Dolce Vita oversize into something modern of our days like this one this is my personal Nuda fountain pen which is exclusive to uh, the Penventure store and let me tell you this first of all I'm not a huge fan of sack filling systems and sack filling systems are problematic uh, they do break from time to time and actually the the rubber sack inside is something which is you're gonna be in need to service it so you clearly need to learn a trick or to learn a new skill in mounting a rubber sack like this one you need glue you need technique you need some tools clearly this is not something which will stand the test of time this is how things were done back then you can clearly see that the elasticity of the sack will downgrade in time and this fountain pen when i got it a few years ago when i tried to ink it the the sack would spring back quite easy right now it's just coming slowly back to its shape once i compress it. i'm gonna tell you something regarding this cap this cap it's notorious for breaking one of the weakest points of this it's actually this rim right here which if i look closely i don't know if you can spot this but right here i have a crack on the mine i haven't posted this fountain pen i haven't dropped it i haven't used it with a force not taking uh, pretty much a very very safe route to every single time that I pick up this fountain pen So this is one in plus reasons why we don't have that many oversized Dolce Vita demonstrator fountain pens in our days Look at that section. I don't know if I will be able to clean it anyway uh, to the magic of cinematography I'm gonna go like this and it's clean, but in the process I've made my fingers inky it's clean to what degree i had to take off the nib unit i will need to do a very very thorough wash to the entire fountain pen now put it in context with an ink which is a little bit more staining i guarantee you wouldn't find one of these fountain pens without a stain if you would use modern inks for more than a week inside of it yes this fountain pens are living proof of the technological advances of our industry why do we like modern fountain pens what draws us to modern fountain pens how much functionality we can add what new design features we can adapt how much we can improve a design and the outcome overall my idea would be to actually advocate for preserving such treasures in order to teach people like me and you watching right now from past years and periods how people were doing things back then uh, and also to serve as a learning tool for everyone who's watching right now pretty much this is what i have for you all in regards of my personal opinions regarding this fountain pen let me know if you own such a fountain pen in which finish which nib size what's your conclusion what's your opinion regarding this fountain pen are you ready to welcome a problematic vintage-ish fountain pen like this one in your personal fountain collection let me know in the comment section down below and let me tell you that i do appreciate that you spend this time with me on the penventure youtube channel if you find my content useful and interesting fun don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up this will help me a lot with the youtube algorithm and everything thank you very much for supporting everything that i do at penventure if you scroll down you'll find the details for our website our social media accounts phone number email anything and everything that you may need in in order to get in contact with me if you are looking forward to get your next writing instrument choose penventure and if you want to support the growth of the penventure youtube channel don't forget to subscribe and you can do that easy just click there turn on the notification bell on and you will be notified whenever we have new content speaking about content if you want to continue watching my previous videos i'm gonna leave this right here you can click and enjoy as always i'm your host Amy from penventure i look forward to seeing you next video Take care, stay safe, enjoy the sun, bye-bye.